Get fired up on the WFO line. WFO, Joe. 954-889-6796. It's just been an absolute joy to be a drag racing fan. Go wide open, and your call may be used on the show. Or preface by saying I'm not a Kurt Busch fan or apologist. I don't know where Greg Anderson's ego is gone, but... I know one person that's going to be a big-time villain in pro stock. That's 954-889-6796. That phone line is always WFO. We're going to kick off our um, post-race media availability here for the AAA Texas 500 here at Texas Motor Speedway. We are joined by our race winning team, team owner, Tony Stewart, and our race Winning um, crew chief, Rodney Childers. And first of all, congratulations, gentlemen, on the win today and making it officially into the Final Four for Homestead um, in two weeks. So we will take questions for Tony or Rodney. If you have one, please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and we'll start with Jerry. Jerry Jordan, kick and start sign it. Tony, I was going to ask you the same is what she said. You've come in here twice now. But uh, on a serious note, uh, talk about what it means to uh, have Kevin locked in to Homestead. We kind of we kind of brushed on that, uh, but now it's a reality. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's a that's a big deal to us. I mean, it's uh, you know it's a scenario that it takes a lot of pressure off next week. I mean, there's there's a lot of guys that are all lumped together there that are going to be fighting for two spots. So uh, you know, there, there's a ton of pressure for those guys, and the next seven days is not going to be a fun seven days. Uh, you know, for those guys preparing for, it. but. You know, gives gives Rodney a little bit of a breather, gives Kevin a little bit of a breather to go out and and uh, you know doesn't mean next weekend you don't you don't work hard. I mean, you you, you stay the course. I mean, he'll tell you he's going to work just as hard next week as he is for Homestead. So uh, you got to keep that momentum going. And uh, but the nice thing is, it does it does take that edge off, I guess. Uh, you know, of worry it takes that out of the equation going into next weekend. So uh, you know, it's big for the organization. You know, obviously, it's it's the goal of the company every year to to be in that position where you know you're going to take at least one car to Homestead to race for a, a championship. So, uh, you know, you, this is one of those tracks, and, and Phoenix next week is one that you know is they're kind of Kevin and Rodney's playground, so to speak. So, uh, or have been historically. So, uh, you know that these are good opportunities. You, you hate to have to rely on Phoenix to to get you in that position, but um, you know to be able to to knock it out like they did today and do it in such a dominant fashion. I mean, that's, uh, you know, that's the kind of day that, that sets a statement to the competition that, that, you know, we feel like our team's peaking at the right time and getting ready for the end of the year. And, and Rodney, for you, um, obviously y'all started off strong with a lot of laps, and then it dropped back. And I think Kevin was sounding kind of frustrated over the radio at some point, what it wasn't like in the car, and whatever changes you made, obviously went back to the front and some cautions fell, things like that. But talk about how – you managed the race today to, to dominate like you did. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing was we, we had a great car off the truck. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't have to chase anything during practice. We didn't have to change anything on our setup or anything like that. And we were able to, to just work on the, the little things during the weekend. And, um, you know, we talked about it a lot this morning that um, it, it was going to be a different race. You know, we had a lot of messages last night about the way that it played out in the spring and um you know i i watched the race from the spring for the third time this morning and um you know there's just so many circumstances that can change with with putting two tires on with gas only with four tires and um you know we're normally the ones that that i i can't stand a points race i'll be honest i don't want to stay out there and get stage points i want to put ourselves in the best position to try to win the race and um, so doing that, you know, you end up putting yourself in a bad spot on those restarts after the stage breaks. And he was able to do a, a really good job of driving back up uh, through there and, and getting six in the uh, in the second stage. And then, um, you know, it, we stayed out at the end of the second stage to get those points and um, put us in a pretty bad hole. Uh, didn't have a great pit stop and then got a penalty the next caution and just a lot of things didn't go right but uh like you said we made some adjustments and um honestly i think just being able to put tires on that one time when those other guys had two or three cycles on their tires ended up being a bigger deal than what we ever thought um you know you would have thought just you know you could go all night with not putting tires on it's not that big a deal but uh once we got rolling there and having a little bit better tires it, it made a big a big difference for us and uh, you know, just kept it turning. That, that, that's really what it was all about: is keeping it turning off a of turn, 
off of turn two and, and keeping that momentum going. All right. I believe we have a question in the press box. Uh, actually, two questions. Uh, Wolfgang Wachter from Germany, Rennsport Press Agency. Wolfgang, you never have one question. You always got two questions. Yeah, which, I'm, I'm, it's I'm, all about consistency, so I appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, congratulations to both of you. I mean, great results. Three cars uh, among the first three. I have a question, two questions for Rodney. Um, you just said the car was very good um, out of the, the truck or box or trailer, whatever you name it. And you just change little things. Can you go, go more into details? What are the little things? Um, I mean, the, we didn't change a single shock or a single, a single um, you know, spring, sway bar, none of that. We, we never changed heights. We never did any of that all weekend. So it just enabled us to, to really focus on some of the small things. Uh, you know, obviously going through the OSS multiple times and making sure that all that looked good and, um, you know, making sure our splitter will look good in all of our pictures and videos and just those types of things is is um, really what i was talking about um, but it also just keeps uh, the atmosphere um, in the right spot i guess you could say you know after going through the week that we had at, at martinsville um, you know that was a stressful weekend uh, we didn't seem to do a whole lot right the whole weekend and um, you know to be able to, to work hard all week and to come here and have things flow the way that they're supposed to flow, um, that, that's really what it was all about. Okay, and question number two. I mean, just looking at here from the press box, uh, all cars looked very, very fast. How, how identical is the setup between uh, Kevin's car and uh, his teammates? I don't think that's anybody's business. But um, the cars weren't built the same and the setups weren't the same. So they still ran one, two, three. We've got one more up here. Go ahead. Jim Hunter, Motorsport.com for Rodney. Could you just talk a little bit about how far uh, your team has come from the start of this season in terms of getting a handle of the package and getting in a position to go from where you were running at the beginning of the year to now competing for a championship? Yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> you know, I'll take as much responsibility for that at the beginning of the year than anything. Um, you know, we, we looked at a lot of different things going into the year. We went to the Vegas test, um, and, you know, we, we decided to go different ways on different things. And, um, you know, obviously you have to pick a direction, right? And, and we picked a direction, and, and it wasn't the right direction, but you've got cars built that are six weeks out, and then you've already went through six, seven races before you can even react to anything. And then once you react to that, you, you've got to – figure it out you got to figure out how to drive it you got to figure out how to set it up and um, so at that point then you're 10 weeks out and um, so you know a lot of that was just part of the sport and part of the way that we operate and um, you know you can't just change things on the fly you can't rebuild cars and um, you know as we learned um, you know obviously all of our drivers got better our teams um, you know the setups all that stuff and you know, you wanna you wanna win as many races as you can, just like last year. Um, but on the other hand, you need to be right in, in the second half of the year and, and be able to start focusing on those details of, of what you need and um, you know how to make the cars fast, but also drive them in traffic. And um, you know, I think that that was just part of it. You know, it it was it was um, a, a big learning curve for all of us and uh, something that we just had to work through. All right, we'll come up front. Uh, Scott Sully with the Flash List. When you guys knew that you made the playoffs, did you set aside a Homestead car, or have you been driving the Homestead car in any one of the races uh, so far? Um, our stuff is is pretty spread out, I guess you could say. Like this car we just won with. The last time it raced was Texas in the spring. Um, you know, we, we just try to keep it to where um, – we can focus on that weekend and you know everything that that you're going to do at homestead is nothing like what you're going to do here at texas um so you know you just kind of got to to focus on those particular races and you know some of that stuff we've done a good job at obviously and some of it we haven't done a good job at and uh, i think you've got to look at at darlington as as a, a key race 
uh, when you think about Homestead. And obviously the Gibbs cars brought the, the right stuff to Darlington. They had the best cars all weekend. They had good speed and they had good fall off. And um, we didn't we didn't take the right cars. We fought hard all weekend and, and uh, was able to get a top five out of it. But um, you know, I think Homestead is going to be the, the craziest thing you've seen. Uh, you know, with this package, you've got, you know, major restarts and three and four or five wide. You've got every lane that you can choose from. Um, and then, obviously, you're going to have cars that are fast on the short run. You're going to have cars fast on the long run. And, um, and you know, if, if Larson can ever make it, he's going to be up against the fence a half a second faster than everybody in the long run. So, um, you know, it, we just got to see how it plays out and be prepared when we get there. I think with this package, that's the, that's the key is you got to have a notebook and you got to be ready to change things when you get there. Uh, if you're too slow, if you're too fast, and um, and figure that out as it get, as as you go. All right, I believe Bob, you had a question. Bob Parker's Fox Sports. Rodney, do you understand the call that was made on the on that pit stop? And was it something that you kind of knew, or is it? With just an interpretation that was kind of new because we hadn't seen it before. Yeah, I mean, um, so basically th that happened, I think it was about three weeks ago in a truck race. Um, so it happened in the truck race, and then it happened to somebody else in the truck race, and then somebody else in the truck race. And then the next day it happened in the Xfinity race, and um, uh, Chad Little sent out a memo the next day just kind of as a reminder about certain things. and. I didn't understand it and um, you know after I got the memo I went to the NASCAR hauler and I got um, uh, they explained all that to me um, I would have never known that before that day and um, we actually had a conversation as a team to make sure that that never happened and some of that you know it, it goes back on me um, you know in three and four we're on the digital radio which is everybody that's below me my engineers and my road crew and you're talking about whether you're going to do tires, you're going to do fuel. And, um, you know, as we're hitting pit road, that conversation is still going on a little bit. And then um, really it's that person's responsibility to pick that tire up before the car gets to the pit stall. And that didn't happen. So, um, you know, like I said, it was something new that got brought up a few weeks back. It was, it was definitely explained to me and it was explained to my guys. And, um, but it's definitely something that they're paying attention to now. All right, we have now been joined by our race winner, Kevin Harvick, driver of the number four, Bush Beer Ducks Unlimited Ford. Before we start with Kevin, does anyone have any additional questions for Rodney or Tony? Okay, we'll go to Nate and then Taryn. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Rodney, first for you, just real quick. Did, did you say you watched the race three times? Uh, so I always, I always start on Monday morning, and um, I watch it Monday and then um, we felt so good about things with Texas. By the time we got to Tuesday after lunch, I started working on Phoenix. So then I watched Phoenix. And then after I watched Phoenix, I was half confused and needed to go back and watch Texas. So then I watched Texas on Wednesday again. And then I watched it again this morning. So um, it's hard to, to, you know, this particular race especially, um, you know, places like here in Indy, you have to go back and pay attention to that stuff and what people do with two tires and no tires and track position and all that. And, and I think our situation was different. Like I said, like we were, we were going to try to get stage points and we were going to try to win the race. And how do you do both of those? And, um, you know, obviously you just kind of got to have that in your head of, of what could happen, what can happen. And I probably drove him crazy, sending crazy messages about what other people did in the spring. Keeps me but, from having to watch it. Yeah, he doesn't. Have he to watches watch it. it so many times, but I don't have to watch it. <laughs> but it, it's really just about you know studying. It, it's it's just like having to take a big ex exam. You gotta you gotta have it in your head and ready to go. And Kevin said this. You felt like this was your best chance. You guys put your eggs in this basket, knowing that the Gibbs cars would probably be better at Phoenix. This, this was your shot, kind of at making. Um, you know, I think the 18 was a little bit better than us at Phoenix in the spring, but. My honest opinion is we took a piece of crap car to Phoenix and we had probably a third place car. So um, I would be surprised if we're not really good next weekend and we just got to get there and, and see how we do. You know, everybody gains on certain things throughout the year and, 
it's a it's a different race it's a different temperature and and um you just kind of gotta you gotta fight through it and figure out what you got when you get there and uh, tony a question for you uh, just your experience as a driver kyle larson uh felt that nascar should have penalized bubba wallace for causing an intentional caution and there's been a couple of instances in recent weeks where intentional yellows have potentially not been called do you have any thoughts on that as a, dr a driver should nascar step in more in those situations or you know, honestly, I feel like NASCAR's backed in a corner uh, on scenarios like this. I mean, I think there's so many things just like, you know, the rule of double yellow lines at, at Talladega and Daytona. I mean, there's so many ball and strike calls that they have that they're put into position of having to make. I think they got to find a way to make it simpler to where it is what it is. I mean, th there w Bubba wasn't working for any team, any man manufacturer. I mean, he was trying to take care of himself in that scenario. So... Uh, you know, it could work for you one week. It could work against you the next week. It's uh, it's just part of it. I mean, but to put NASCAR in that position where they have to act and react to every single thing that happens, I wouldn't even want to be a NASCAR official if that's the way it had to be all the time. So Same thing happened last week, right? Yeah. It's it's just it gets. I've done it. At what point do you sit there and say enough's <laughs> enough? And it just uh, at some point we've got to somewhat adopt the con the old time tradition of keep it simple, stupid. It's just got to be simplified to where they don't have, they shouldn't have to sit up there and babysit every single thing that everybody does all the time. There's enough rules and regulations that they have to do that need to be in place, let alone the things that they shouldn't have to be put in those positions. So it's, uh, I mean, you can ask 10 different people, they're going to give you 10 different answers on it. I just feel bad that NASCAR has to be put in that position and that, you know, after a race like that, that that's what they got to be scrutinized for is because they're trying to do their job. So there, there's plenty of things that we give them a hard time for not doing. There's plenty of things that they do right, but there's plenty of things that they shouldn't have to be put in those positions, and I feel like that's one of those. Right. Was, that, was that your question or Dustin's? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they are related. Yeah. So. I just like that they sit next to each other. Well, it's because they're related. I yeah. mean, if you see, their toes are touching each other under the table there. They play <laughs> dresses. <laughs> so just makes him feel better. Well, I know, but you guys can't hold each other's hands from there, so. <laughs> Go ahead, Darren. But in your head, you are. We know that. It's okay. We, we know mentally you guys are touching each other at all times. So. On that note. Aren't you glad I, got, I came in here twice this weekend? I mean, damn it. Missed you guys. Wait a second. Where's Gene? <laughs> Gene's long gone by now. Gene's smart. He says, I'm not going to the media center. All right, Darren, ask your question. All right. Taryn Walk, NASCAR.com. This one's for Tony. What do you think about the guy next to you tying you at 49 career wins now? Well, I, I, hate, I shouldn't say I hate to say this because I don't hate to say this. I'm excited about the fact that he's going to far surpass this, this landmark, but I'm really proud that the night that he did tie it, that it's on a, a night that was so significant. I mean, this is a, this is a big win. It's not just a, an early season win or a second win that doesn't mean anything. This is the win that you know, locks him into to running for a championship at Homestead. So, uh, and like he's I said, here. so that's pretty cool. <laughs> just happened that I was around in the neighborhood this yeah, week. Right. So, <laughs> but um, you know, it's cool to be here and be a part of it with him. But you know, I can promise you, he's going to far surpass this and and be long gone, and I'll be left in the weeds on that stat long after. Uh, I would say probably there's a really good shot in seven days that stat will be non-existent again. What does that mean to you, Harvick, hearing him say all that? Well, you know, we we did all this. You know, and the, and the only conversations that we talked about were we want to win races and have a chance to win championships. And, and you know, I think that the faith that, that uh, he and his group put in letting us, you know, talk them into uh, going out and hiring him and, and putting the faith in him and, and going out and hiring the, the guys that, that he wanted to hire when we bought the team, I mean, or when we built the team, um, you know, we didn't have a truck, we didn't have a trailer, we didn't have a race car, and they let us do everything how we wanted from the from the very beginning. And you know, it's it's, I, I mean, it's kind of reshaped and molded and and changed the you know things at, at SHR. And it's, you know, last year, I mean, gosh, I don't even know how many races we won as a team last year, uh, but we won a, a bunch of races, you know, as as four drivers. And 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 really, to me, that's the most rewarding thing is is seeing the company continue to thrive and win races in different rules packages, big motors, tapered spacers, big spoilers, little spoilers, Fords, Chevrolets, 
um, Stuart Haas Racing has has been in victory lane, and and we've been fortunate to to win races with all those different scenarios. And and in the end, that comes down to people. Uh, you're only as good as the people that you have around you. And and so um, them them letting us go out and, and build a team with people that that came to Stuart Haas Racing to be on that number four car is is really what started this whole thing. And and now we're I don't know what are we 26 seven wins later. Um, six years in, so it's um, it's been it's been a lot of fun, and you know he's he's so he's so laid back and and you know understands how the the the, the peaks and valleys go of, of this particular sport. So I'm glad he's here on the night that that we were able to to both be uh, 49s. I guess that's yeah that's that's pretty cool. Bringing a tear Wins, to my eye. yeah. <laughs> so that that was pretty cool. And I knew he was here because when I pulled in, I saw the car next to me had mud all over the hood of it. I'm like, oh, Tony's here. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We believe that was it for Rodney and Tony. So you guys are dismissed. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we will continue with questions for Kevin. Thanks. So if you have one, please raise your hand. State your name and affiliation, and we'll start over here, right behind you. Are you found the flag? We got a cowboy hat and a flag. Sure. Mark Arrow, PRN. Hi, Mark. <laughs> let me just let me just help this before we have get, like get him in the right spot. <laughs> so you got the hat, the checkered flag, some M and M's, and a Bush beer. You guys are set, right? We'll, we'll move that. <laughs> <laughs> you gave him the candy and moved the beer. Uh, I took the candy. <laughs> Kevin, how do you feel about uh, making it to the final four again? It's getting is it old hat for you or is it a new experience every time and, and something to be really enjoyed? You know, I think every, every year is, is different. Um, you know, for, for me, I would tell you that, that I just, I don't think we, you know, we've, we've run as well as, as we've probably wanted to run week in and week out compared to, you know, the, the things that, that we expect. But, you know, this particular year has been f neat for me to sit back and watch the evolution of, of, you know, how we progressed with the race cars, how the conversations have progressed, how my, you know, theories and, and things that I think are right and wrong have changed. And, and you know, it's, it's such a, it's such a, a process of, of going to all these different racetracks. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, there's just a lot of choices of, of what you can do to the car and the things that you do and, and not being the dominant car on a racetrack has, has, you know, made us work harder. So the thing that I can tell you is, you know, it's, it's, um, it's evolved into not making mistakes. And yes, Dustin, we made it through the whole night without having a speeding penalty. <laughs> so I don't have to find you this, uh, this next week to, uh, to, uh, to, we didn't have a speeding penalty, so you're <laughs> off the hook. So it's, you know, it's, but that, that's the type of scenario that, that, um, you know, it's, it's like tonight where you have the, you know, the pit road penalty, you put it behind you and you're like, okay, well now what do we do? And, you know, we, we went right out and had a bad restart and went further backwards. And, and then, then you had the penalty and, and then you go all the way to the back and then change the tires and you're like, okay, well that's over. Um, and you have to start thinking about how you're going to get back to the front. And, and we stayed out longer and the caution came out and next thing you know, you're on the, on the right side of the cycle. And, and so th those are the types of things that, that, that um, we've been reminded of this year that you have to, you have to think about things outside of the box because the box changes a lot. Um, obviously the rules changed a tremendous amount this year and, and the thought processes and the things that you've done in the past are irrelevant. Um, so, you know, anytime you hear about, Anytime you hear about, you know, we did this last year, it's like I just stop them and say, you know, there's no reason to talk about last year because it is absolutely irrelevant to the things that we've done. So um, the, the day that, that you stop thinking about uh, how you're going to evolve and get stuck in, in today and what you did yesterday is, is the day that this sport will leave you, leave you behind. You have to be very open-minded and, and – you know, this is a progressive sport, and, and, and you have to keep up with that progression on a weekly basis because it, it, it changes rapidly. And, and, and those are the types of things that, that I have really enjoyed this year. Uh, even though we haven't been the dominant car, we've figured out how to win. We've figured out 
um, how to run fast and, and, you know, put ourselves in position to have chances to win races. And, and we've, we've capitalized on, on the, the few chances that, that, that we've been in position to win. And, and that's, that's really, uh, it's been, a, it's been a good character building year to, uh, to, you know, to, to have to battle in order to get yourself in position. So what's your overriding emotion now, Kevin? Is it relief that you've overcome all that this year to get to the final four? What are you feeling? Um, I'm surprised <laughs> to be, to be dead honest with you. Um, you know, I'm, 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 um, uh, I'm surprised, but I'm not, but you know, I think, uh, you know, the expectations are always there. Um, you know, I think for, for me, I, I still feel like, you know, this was our best chance to win. I know Rodney, he's always the positive one. Um, he's, he's, he, and, and I tell you guys, I've told you guys that before there's, there's, at some point, he's going to talk me into thinking that we can win every single race. Um, I can think about, uh, you know, well, probably not. I don't know. We didn't, we didn't run that well. And he'll, he'll, have, he'll have ten reasons why the car is going to be better. And every week it's, it's man, this is the best car we've ever had. Uh, we did this, 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 and this wrong last time. This is what we've changed, and this is why it's going to be better. And he can, he can present it. By the time we start practice, I'm like, man, we're going we're gonna to win this race. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, but I'm not, um, uh, because of the, the character of the team. And, and I just, I love the way that it's evolved and the battle that we've had to get there and really, uh, try to, um, achieve something that, that wasn't really achievable, uh, when we first started the season this year and, and we've grounded out all year. Um, uh, my note from Mr. Gossage there that he, he wrote me this year, uh, that was sitting in my bus this year. It said, you've had the strangest year uh, that I've seen you have in a long time, but here you are still battling for a championship. And that was, that was him <laughs> writing that note, watching the, watching the races in the season. And, and that's really how it feels for, for me as well. Um, you know, it's, it's been a strange year, and here you are lingering around and, and wound up in, in victory lane with, with uh, two races to go, and now you get to go race for a championship. So I don't know if I answered anything that you asked me. <laughs> All right. We'll continue with questions. Any questions in the press box? All right. We'll come back downstairs. Any questions for Kevin? Okay. Nate? Following up on that relationship with, with Rodney, uh, you know, you were laughing there that you don't have to watch the races because he's maniacally reviewing tape every hour of every day, apparently. Uh, <laughs> And I think I heard that you took the family like to the zoo um, this I weekend. Did. So is they have a really nice zoo here. <laughs> okay. I guess you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> does it does it work in a sense between you guys? Because I mean, you just stay laser focused, but don't really worry about other stuff. You know that he's just yeah. gonna worry about just staying on top of everything and all the the minutia and details and stuff like that. Yeah, you know they they expect me to come to the racetrack and be prepared. And, you know, the, the thing about being prepared for me is from a physical standpoint, a mental standpoint, to be as mentally focused as, as you can. And, and my age and experience kind of comes into that, I guess you could say, um, sometimes because you've been to some of these racetracks so many times. And I feel like I, I know the characteristics of the car. But there's, there's not a day that, that goes by that he doesn't send me a text, hey, we're going to do this or... Um, one of the engineers will send me a text and say, what do you think about this gear ratio? Or what do you think about, um, you know, whatever. Um, one of them is texting me at least once a day, if not multiple times a day, and as to what's going on and, and what's happening. And, and that, that, those are those relationships that are they're constant and steady and, and, you know, everybody <laughs> believes in each other because that's just how it works. It's, it's, never, it's never a bad time to text me or it's never a bad time to call me. It's never a bad time to ask me to do something. It's never a bad time. When they need something, I put down what I'm doing. And I go and I try to figure out how we're going to do it, how we're going to go to the simulator, how we're going to go to the race shop. If you need me to come to a meeting, just tell me. Um, you know, the priority are these guys and that race team and the things that, that they need 
Um, but you know, I, I am a thorough believer that that circle of life has to be balanced for you to show up to this racetrack every single week to be as focused as you need to be to process all that information and listen to those guys and, and, and listen to the things that you do and know that I'm just a piece of information that, that allows them to put the puzzle together. It's a big puzzle. You throw all the pieces out on the table and, and those guys put the puzzle together. So there's a, there's a, there's a deep, um, you know, belief in each other that, that we can go out and be better than anybody on any given day. And, you know, most of the time we can talk ourselves into it, even when we, when we probably don't really have a chance, we can talk ourselves into it. And, you know, just by the experience of the things that we do and, and the experience of, of racing in, in general and, and them calling a race and, and, um, you know, there's just that, that belief that, that we can figure it out. Um, I will. I can look at my fancy dancy little watch that, that the text messages pop up and I can see who it is. And um, I always, you know, it's, I know that Rodney's going to be texting me on, on Saturday or, you know, Sunday. He's going to be feeding me something and, and I, need to, I need to make sure that, that when it's fed to me that I process it. And whether it's an email or a text messages and, and every week I get the most emails from Rodney. Um, as to anybody else that, that emails me during the week. And I get the most text messages from Rodney, um, unless I'm on one of those stupid uh, group texts of somebody that, that's got some funny something that, that they send to 47 people that everybody thinks they need to respond to. Uh, for the most part, it's going to be Rodney that sends me the most texts. And it's all information about the race. And if it's not, it's, hey, are, are you going to the go-kart track today? I'm going to stop by. Or you want to go? you know, we're all going to go ride our bikes today. You have any interest in, in going, you know, it's, so it's, it's just communication. All right. I believe we'll go upstairs for a question. Y'all better hurry. We got a Slurpee. We got to go get. <laughs> question upstairs. Have you ever had a Slurpee? Do you know what that is? All right. We'll come back downstairs. You're going to love it. Any additional questions? Okay, Bob. You're going to be so ready for school. Is my breath bad? <laughs> <laughs> Bob Hockers, Fox Sports. Um, Denny had I was trouble today. He's 20-something points back. What's it like to be to have a season probably like he's had and then be on the brink of not making, of not advancing? Yeah. Well, you know, we had that in 14 and, and – um, you know we've been in that scenario a, a couple times, but those guys are those guys are capable. Like, you know, I I I enjoy those types of situations because it it brings out the focus in in your your whole team. And when you've had a season that like they've had, they'll be they'll be tough to beat next week when you when you go to to Phoenix because they're gonna they're gonna dot every I and cross every T because they know that their season's on the line. So it'll be it'll be fun to watch. Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I tell you, you know, you guys think it's miserable to be in those situations, but really those are, those are the, some of the best moments that you can ever have. Like the, the thrill in, of the anxiety and not knowing and, and just that preparation that comes with knowing that this is the day. If you're going to be in it, this is the day that you have to put it all together, and it starts when you walk in the racetrack and you get in that car to go out and it's one lap at a time, and you know that that better be the you know the, the best you can do on the first lap of practice, the best you can do on a second lap, and it better be a constant evolution as you go through that because there's nothing, nothing like um, you know succeeding in those particular moments and and that thrill of of all that preparation and that anxiety and and um, all those emotions and and everything hinges on that one moment when you actually achieve. Um, you know, conquering that moment, there's nothing like it. I mean, it, that thrill is, is, is the best thrill that you can possibly get for me. All right. Well, Kevin, congratulations. Thank you. This is WFO Radio.